right, joined by the latest Crusader to commit, or at least one of them, and this was no surprise to us in the Crusaders family. It is the journeyman, Jake Franchick. Jake, thanks for taking some time, my friend. No problem. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So, you know, the million-dollar question right now with no hockey, what have you been doing? What's keeping you busy? Uh, just, you know, trying to keep busy with the family. We're actually, we're actually renovating, so we uh, put in hardwood and painted the walls, so that took up some time. Too so you're bad. getting to uh, you're getting to learn a little bit of the handyman work, but also I mean that's that's a manual labor too, helping you stay in shape a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's listen. It's been such a, a peculiar time, but I think we'll start with the commitment. You are now one of three from this year's team to join uh, the University of Alabama Huntsville Chargers. Uh, you know, we kind of had a bet amongst the broadcast team, at least, that that's exactly where you'd end up going. Bit of a rebuilding stage for them, but you get to go down there with both Will Zappernick and, and Jared White. So let's just talk about, I guess, your your decision and maybe what led up to it. Uh, well. I went on a fly down last season. I really liked it there. And uh, at that time, Will was committed there, which is uh, one of my best buddies. So, And then uh, Jared obviously committed there middle of the year. So when they offered, it was kind of an easy decision for me going down with uh, my line mate and two of my really good friends. So, uh, you know, like you said, there's a rebuilding team. So a lot of opportunity there, which uh, I like. And I'm just uh, excited for the opportunity. What else do you know about the kind of hockey down there? It's obviously a Div 1 school. It's, uh, I don't know them outside of anything other than hockey. So what, what do you know about maybe the, the kind of level of competition you're going to get? Um, well, I talked to a couple of guys who uh, went there last year, like Zach Kaiser and Garrett Clegg, and they said the biggest difference is just kind of the strength. You know, you're playing against men now, so just uh, have the big off season, And uh, you obviously got to get faster and bigger. It's hard in a time like this when the gym's closed. So... You just got to find the little things that you get bigger, better, and faster. Well, exactly. So we talked about you doing the home renovations. What else are you doing to, to make sure that your, your muscles are staying as ready as they can be right now? Um, I'm fortunate enough that we do have kind of a gym downstairs. Like we got a bench press and, you know, weights. And uh, I got a good hockey shooting area. So just trying to do the most, uh, find workouts online and uh, take advantage of what I have, I guess, for the most part. So the school hasn't sent you any sort of specific regime as far as an off-season workout goes? Are you expecting anything like that? Are you not sure? Uh, I'm not too sure. They haven't sent anything yet, but uh, but who knows? I, I got to ask if you're a college football guy because you're going down there into college football territory. Are you a fan? Uh, um, I watched the odd football game, you know, kind of the finals and stuff like that. But that's uh, Will's been talking about the Crimson Tides kind of right down the road. So uh yeah i'd be i'd be loving to go see one of those games for sure Seems yeah exciting. i have a hunch you're gonna get uh, thrown into that culture pretty quick from what i can understand yeah exactly um, so you're leaving a year early you could have come and back and played your 20 year old season in the ajhl uh i'm wondering i guess what the decision process was like for leaving at this time um i mean i've been in the league for three years so i thought that uh, maybe it was time to go and uh, kind of made the decision decision a little bit easier that uh, Will and Jared were going down to kind of go more comfortable. And, um, you know, they offered for, for next year or the year after. So I felt like I was ready physically and, uh, you know, kind of wanted to go get my life started with the school aspect of things. So it was kind of a family decision as well, but uh, it made the decision a lot easier that, uh, you know, Will and Jared were going for sure. Yeah, how much of the recruiting process did they really aid in? I mean, you said you went last year, so you would have had the idea. But, I mean, I imagine those two kind of were probably tipping the scales in favor of Huntsville, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, no, my they, my parents were, were all for it, kind of, to start my life. Because I've already been out of school for, for two years. So, uh, kind of get back in the swing of things. Yeah, they were excited. And uh, they were going for next year as well. So, it kind of worked out. <sighs> It would have been nicer, I'm sure, to end on a different note. And and there's nothing that we can say that hasn't already been said about the hockey season being ripped away from you guys. Um, but you were such a key piece and a heart and soul guy down the middle of this club for the last two, two and a half, three seasons, right? I mean, you, you committed to this team before I even moved to Edmonton, which I think is crazy. Um, but what, what was it like, I guess, being a part of that group and building up towards something that would have ultimately, in all likelihood, been a pretty special run for you guys this year? Yeah, well, uh, three years ago when, when we all kind of signed, we kind of came to a middle-of-the-pack team. And, uh, you know, Arjun and Jer or I mean, Arjun and Will, and we came and we're just like, let's, uh, you know, let's flip this around. 
we're living at home and stuff and you know the Crusaders have always been so nice to us and it's kind of it's kind of like uh just growing up with the team and stuff like that and you know uh like last year we had we had a winning team and uh it was nice to start winning with uh with all the guys you've been with and then this year kind of we kept the same culture and stuff like that and built a good culture for the team and just kind of frustrating how it ended. You know, we were number one in, in Canada rankings and stuff like that. We didn't even get a sniff of playoff hockey. But, you know, the Crusaders were uh, were great to me for the three years. So I just appreciate everything they did. You kind of put us inside your head when you when you get that text message or the phone call. I don't know if it came from Kyle Chase or, or how you guys found out. I think at the point that the season ultimately got canceled, we probably already knew it was trending that way. But, you know, what, what happens next? So you, you find out who texts the group. I know you're part of the leadership core. Uh, yeah, so we went to practice actually the game before the day before we were supposed to start against Drayton Valley. I think it was a Thursday and the, the end got canceled and kind of all the sports did and then uh, we got word from other teams that they weren't even practicing so I don't know we kind of came with the mindset that hopefully we'll play tomorrow and then after we came off the ice we got uh, word that it's going to be postponed for two weeks so we were kind of hopeful that it was uh, going to start up you know just get another two weeks of uh, practicing hopefully but uh, and then the next day they just canceled indefinitely so it was kind of all of us kind of found out at once right after practice, which was, uh, we were kind of hopeful that it was going to start, but then the next day, kind of heartbreak, and then just starting to get over it, I guess. Yeah, and, and how really do you? Um, yeah, are you leaning on your teammates through that? Have you guys kind of gotten past the point of, I, the shock is over, right? But it still has to sting, especially considering that you didn't even get to play a playoff game. Like, that's the most bewildering part to me. Yeah, I mean, we have a group chat, and we were all kind of frustrated at first and in shock, to be honest. Like, it didn't seem real. Like, it, we just had such a special team. And, you know, we had that week by or two week by, and we were just practicing. And it just felt like, you know, this was the team to kind of go all the way. Like, our chemistry there, you know, the way our team bonded, our coaching staff, it just felt like it was kind of all the right situation. And then, uh, you know, to end like that was just, uh, like you said, it was just heartbreaking. But, yeah, we just uh, kind of keep in touch with everyone. And, you know, we all got along so well, and we, uh, you know, I love all the boys, so it's uh, to lean on each other and stuff like that and help each other out. It's the best way to get through it, I guess. With that in mind, what does it mean to you to be a Crusader? What, what, what does Crusaders hockey mean to Jake Franchick? Uh, it just honestly means family. You know, uh, we go to the rink, what is it, like six, seven times a, a week for, for the better part of the year, so you get to see their faces every day, and it's just like your family, you're just comfortable with them, and you know, the bond we had with our teammates this year was just special. Like, Crusader hockey was kind of everything. It's all you think about during the year and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just sad because Crusaders have never won. So it was kind of exciting to have that opportunity to, to bring the banner back. But, yeah, just uh, family. Yeah, I guess that might leave you with a bit of a chip on your shoulder in terms of how hungry you're going to be whenever you get to lace them up next. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Exactly. You know, next time you get the opportunity to play hockey, you just can't take it for granted. Yeah, yeah that's wise words there, taking it for granted, because you just, you never thought that something like this could be ripped away, right? Let alone for, for you guys and such a, the peak of what everybody I think was building towards in every part of that franchise. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Is there any part of, of your junior hockey career that really stands out to you? Any moment, any speech, any interaction, any any on-ice accomplishment, anything like that that really is kind of where you hang your hat on your AJHL career? Um, you know, having uh, played playoffs last year and getting that, uh, that's, I guess it would have been the second round win against Fort McMurray. And uh, winning that series was just uh, – you know, it was so exciting to do with the, the team and everything. And just to play playoff hockey, I mean, like, against Spruce Grove Saints, it felt like every game was like a full full rink. And uh, same with that there rink. So, you know, getting playoff wins and celebrating with the team is probably the, the thing that I look back on the most. And, and with that being said, we'll end with this. A message to those fans that packed both of those barns that came out and showed support. I know you were one of their favorite players, Jake. Is there anything that you can say to them to, to uh, you know, maybe thank them or, or anything like that? Uh, well, on behalf of the Crusaders, we love our fans and uh, we appreciate everything you do. We truly do got the best fans in the, in the league. So I know I'll be back next year watching, uh, watching the guys. So uh, thank you to all the fans and every, everyone's support this year.